powerful empires decline for many reasons. The Bible tells us the plagues ravaged Egypt and gave the Israelites the chance to escape. Archaeologist Eric Klein is not persuaded. Rather than the plagues, I would look more to human intervention. Klein looks at the archaeological record to see what might have weakened Egypt. Scholars have deciphered powerful evidence that Egypt was attacked by mysterious invaders from across the Mediterranean. They call them the Sea Peoples. The attack of the Sea Peoples was probably the Egyptians' worst nightmare. They are the fiercest warriors that the Egyptians have faced. And the Egyptians tell us that everybody went down in the face of these Sea Peoples. Only the Egyptians were able to stand, and even that was a Pyrrhic victory because the Egyptians were so weakened that they were never the same ever again. Although the Egyptians never mentioned the plagues, they did document these attacks in pictographs on the mortuary temple of Ramses III. Archaeological finds match these writings. I see no need for divine intervention when human intervention can explain it just as well, if not better. Weakened by these attacks, Egypt might have lost control of the Israelites. But did they flee? If so, where is the evidence? For that, we need to retrace the steps of their escape. The Bible says that 600,000 men and their families traveled through the desert for 40 years. Archaeologists would expect to find traces of such a large group. If the biblical numbers are correct and you've got two and a half million people wandering around for 40 years, I would want to find entire landscapes denuded. I'd want to find hundreds of sheep and goat carcasses, the bones. I mean, even if they didn't ask for directions, you know, wandering for 40 years, there would be something. The search for a trace of this epic migration has turned up nothing. Archaeologist Jim Hoffmeyer believes the reason is that there were far fewer Israelites than the Bible says. And a much smaller group would have left behind much less evidence to be found later. One of the enduring images of the movie The Ten Commandments is these millions of people coming out of Egypt and rushing uh, into the deserts of Sinai. Hoffmeyer attributes this misleading image to a misunderstanding of the Hebrew word Aleph. The Bible says the number of men with their families who left Egypt is 600 Aleph. The word Aleph can be translated three different ways. It can be translated thousand. Aleph can also be translated as a clan. The third option is that it's a military unit, which I think is a more plausible scenario. According to Hoffmeyer's interpretation, instead of 600,000 men and their families, there were as few as 5,000. The fact is, not a single artifact has been found that could be definitively linked to the biblical exodus. If the parting sea, the burning bush, the plagues did happen, they appear to have left no traces. There's no way to confirm even that the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. There is only one source for the story of exodus, the Bible. For many scholars, the silence of the Egyptian sources is telling. I want two or three separate sources before I will believe what any one source says. And frankly, there is no Egyptian written text saying anything about the Exodus. Some argue that the Egyptians simply wouldn't record such an epic embarrassment. I wouldn't expect Ramses to, uh, in any historical records, to say, oh, by the way, I let these Hebrew slaves get away because I was having some troubles. Perhaps not on monuments for public display, but the Egyptians were meticulous bureaucrats and did keep unflattering paperwork. You do have Egyptian documentation of bad things happening, of civil war, of unrest, of foreign incursion, of people coming in and taking Egypt over, and yet you have no evidence for this massive upheaval of the pharaoh and the 
destruction of his entire army. You would expect to find that. Looking at Exodus solely through the lens of science, we know only a few hard facts. Ruins suggest that people of Semitic origin may have lived in Egypt around 1600 BC. About 400 years later, an Egyptian tablet states a people called Israel lived in Canaan, present-day Israel. What happened in between the time Exodus supposedly took place is a mystery. Scientific explanations offered for the many miracles of Exodus, though intriguing, take us no closer to proving it happened. And the archaeological and historical records remain resolutely silent about these epic events. We do not have a single shred of evidence to date. There is nothing archaeologically to attest to anything from the biblical story. No plagues, no parting the Red Sea, no manna from heaven, no wandering for 40 years. The most likely reason that we're not finding any evidence for the exodus in Egypt is that it didn't happen the way that the Bible said it did or that it didn't happen at all. But even skeptics admit that precious grains of truth might lie at the heart of the narrative. Perhaps it was born among the small groups of nomadic people who traveled between Egypt and the land of Canaan. I think there's a very good chance that what actually took place was a series of migrations, waves of migrations, if you will, over three or four hundred years of people leaving Egypt and making their way up to Canaan in ones, twos, threes, maybe even tens, hundreds at the most. The story of the nomads' journeys was perhaps told and retold, passed down from generation to generation until it became an epic. Despite the lack of evidence, the story of Exodus endures. It helped shape the modern world. The tale of the liberation of a people and the triumph of their one God over many has resonated through the ages. Revealed word, revealing mythology, the truth of this story can only be answered in the heads and hearts of each individual. But surely the questions are worth asking. We have yet to find any indication from any kind of archaeological source that it actually took place. For people who have religious convictions, they don't need proof. It all boils down to this is a supernatural event, and you can't explain it in any other way. Ultimately, the power of Exodus lies more in faith than in science. There's no real scientific proof that the Exodus took place, but as a Christian or as a Jew, you shouldn't need scientific proof to be a person of faith. Faith doesn't need to be scientifically proven, nor should it be. It's faith. Perhaps, someday, the wilderness will reveal some bit of incontrovertible evidence that Exodus happened. But for now, the desert keeps its secrets.